Hi, and welcome to the Risk System 6000 family. I'm Eric. And I'm Tony. In the next few minutes, we will introduce you to the basics of setting up and operating your new Risk System 6000 power station or power server. It's an impressive addition to your office. Think of it. Not long ago, a computer with this much power would have filled a space the size of this entire office. Yet, for all its power, your Risk System 6000 power station or power server includes features which make it easy to get started and which are designed to assist you along the way. Even if you're a newcomer to computers, you'll be using your new power station or power server quickly. You see, we've provided you with a set of information and education tools that are designed to be easy to use and help you towards becoming a productive user of your Risk System 6000 computer. Included with your system are this videotape to help you organize your initial setup and operation an IBM Risk System 6000 system unit installation and service guide. There are also separate manuals with detailed instructions for installing and operating the display, the printer, and other devices that may be included with your system. Also included is the installation kit for IBM AIX version 3 Risk System 6000 for each full package of the operating system that was ordered. This kit guides you through the installation of the software included with your system. The licensed applications included with your system, such as word processors, graphics, or communications programs, also have their own installation kit to help you get them up and running quickly. During your first few sessions with your system, the Quick Start Kit will provide you with quick answers to your questions. If you like, attach it along the edge of your keyboard for ready reference. Info Explorer is a quick but comprehensive source of help that's available from your system display. And Info Trainer that provides you individualized training on how to use your Risk System 6000 computer. You'll see how to use these helpful tools later in this videotape. And we'll also discuss the following topics. Getting started with your Risk System 6000 power station or power server computer beginning a work session, using Info Explorer and Info Trainer information and education features, and customizing your system by installing licensed programs or changing equipment connected to your system. We suggest that you first watch this short videotape in its entirety. Later you can review individual sections as needed. The information provided in this videotape and in the manuals gives you the facts you need to get started and to use your Risk System 6000 power station or power server. Of course, should a question arise or if you encounter a problem, help is only a phone call away with IBM's Global Support Network. Right now, continue watching this videotape. Getting started with your Risk System 6000 computer is next. Although Risk System 6000 computers are available in several different models, the operation of all models is basically the same. It's comforting to know that no matter which model you're presently using, you can move to a different model and begin work right away. The Risk System 6000 model you have may be one of the following. A Power Station or Power Server 320, a Power Station or Power Server 520, 530, Power Server 540, a Power Station 730, or a Power Server 930. If you are using equipment connected to a Power Server model, you may be using an IBM 7010 X Station Model 120. Your system may also include one or several external media devices. Your system can be used with a wide variety of graphics and character or ASCII displays. We will be discussing aspects of the system with both types of displays later in this program. The simple steps that you will learn in this videotape will allow you to start up and begin using any one of these powerful Risk System 6000 power stations or power servers. The size, shape, and other physical features of the Risk System 6000 computers provide you flexibility when arranging the position and layout of your system. 
When laying out your system, make certain that the cables used to connect the system components are long enough to reach without straining the connectors. After you've arranged your system, the front panel of the system unit should be within easy reach, the display at eye level, and the keyboard at a comfortable height. When you're ready, we'll begin our first session with your new RISC System 6000 computer. Now you're ready to see how to set the power of your RISC System 6000 computer in motion. But first, make sure you have the following materials in hand. The installation kit for IBM AIX version 3 RISC System 6000 and the installation kit provided with each of the licensed applications you plan to use. If your system was ordered with the software pre-installed, insert the key into the mode switch. Set it to the normal position to begin. Set the power switch to the on or on position. The power on light will illuminate. The three-digit numbers displayed on the system unit will cycle through different numbers. This indicates that the system is performing self-tests and will take several minutes. When the three-digit display goes blank, the system has completed the self-test and is ready to proceed. At this time, you may wish to set the key to the secure position and remove it. This will prevent unauthorized restarting of the system and prevent loss of data. After several screens of information, the login prompt will appear. Adjust the brightness and contrast controls on your display if the prompt appears too bright or too dim. Next, you must identify yourself to the system as an authorized user. If your organization has appointed a system administrator, you should have been given a login ID and a temporary password. Type in your login ID and password, pressing enter after each. As you type in your password, the cursor does not move and your password does not appear. This is to prevent someone from learning your private password. Enter the characters exactly as given by your system administrator. Use upper and lower case characters as indicated. If you are installing your system, log in as root. You will not be prompted for a password. The pound sign will appear as the system prompt, confirming your login and permitting system administrator authority. While it is unlikely that a normal user could inadvertently alter or lose data, operating as the system administrator with a root login allows you to make changes to system parameters that may be difficult to undo. It's best for you to obtain your own login ID and password to operate as a regular user whenever possible. From this point, how your session proceeds will depend on whether your system is installed with AIX Windows, a picture-oriented screen, or ASCII, a text-oriented screen. First, we'll review the procedures for using AIX Windows graphical user interface. Shortly after entering your password, the AIX Windows desktop appears on your display. A pointer also appears on the screen. You control the pointer by moving the IBM three-button mouse across your work surface. There are five icons or symbols that always appear on the desktop. You select an icon by briefly clicking and releasing the left mouse button. These icons represent information, system commands, and applications. Selecting these icons in certain combinations allows you to do work on the data in your system. Select the system cabinet by moving the pointer over it and click the left mouse button twice in quick succession. Clicking the mouse in this fashion is called double clicking and performs the default action for that icon. By selecting the system cabinet icon, you immediately have a number of tools available to you. Double click the clock icon to see the system time window. Now try moving the window to another part of the desktop. Move the pointer over the title bar on the clock window. Press and hold the left mouse button, then drag the window to another location on the desktop. Release the mouse button and the clock remains in place. Did you try it? There are several ways in which you can change the size and shape of a window. If you wish to make a window fill the screen, 
click on the Maximize button located at the upper right corner of the window. If you wish to return the window to its default size, click on the Minimize button. Another way to change the size and shape of the window is to move the cursor to any corner of the window. Notice that when the pointer is in a certain position, its shape changes to that of a corner. When the cursor changes shape, you can press the left mouse button and hold it down while you move the corner of the window. When you have more than one window opened, you make a window the active window by simply moving the pointer anywhere in that window. Notice that the border of the active window changes brightness or color. If the windows are overlaid, the active window jumps to the front of the display when you single click on the title bar. When you're finished with a window, you can put it away by clicking on the minimize button again or you can select the control button located at the upper left corner of the window to close or exit. Other icons on the desktop represent directories where files are stored. Double click on a directory to see the files it contains. A file may be numeric or graphic information or it may be text information. Special symbols tell you about the files. A pair of eyeglasses, for example, indicates that you can see the information in the file, but you cannot change the information. A no entry symbol indicates that the file cannot be seen or modified. This icon represents a program that allows you to do work. However, a padlock on a program icon indicates that you cannot use the program. Using the pointer, you can manipulate files quickly and easily. To print the content of a text file, Simply hold down the left mouse button on the file icon and drag it across the desktop to the printer icon and release the button. Similarly, you can eliminate a file by selecting it and dragging it to the trash icon. AIX Windows provides you with two easy shortcuts to work with. Click and hold the left mouse button outside of any window and you automatically see the contents of the root menu. Click and hold the right mouse button in the desktop and you see the desktop menu, a collection of commands for managing the contents of your desktop. The best way to become familiar with your new RISC System 6000 power station or power server is to try it. Practice using the mouse and manipulating some of the icons we've just seen. As soon as you're comfortable using the system, you should complete the installation of the base operating software and the licensed applications that you wish to use. We'll review the procedure for completing the installation later in this videotape. In the meantime, navigate around your AIX Windows desktop for a while and have some fun with the standard tools provided. You can see why the new RISC System 6000 Power Station and Power Server is so exciting. If your system uses an ASCII display, information is displayed as individual text or symbol characters. The blinking line or square on the display screen is called the cursor. It indicates where your data will be entered as you type it with the keyboard. Another important feature of the display screen is the system prompt. When you see this symbol, the system is ready to accept your instructions. If you are in the shell, you will see the dollar sign. If you see the pound sign, you have logged in with Root System Administrator Authority. Other systems may display a custom prompt that can be set up by the system administrator. Information and instructions are entered via the keyboard. The keyboard is divided into four parts. The typewriter keys, which allow you to enter alphabetical and numerical information into the system, the function keys, which provide you with shortcuts to enter special commands into the system. The control keys, which allow you to quickly move the cursor around the display screen and through documents. And the numeric keys, which, when the numlock key is pressed and the numlock light is illuminated, act as a 10-key numeric entry pad, providing another method of entering numerical data. The application you are using determines how each key functions, so you must refer to the information provided with each application to determine how certain keys will respond. When entering instructions into the system, pay attention to whether commands are indicated as uppercase, meaning capital letters, or lowercase, meaning small letters. Often you will be asked to enter keys in certain combinations. For example, you will hear or read terms such as Alt-B, 
When you encounter this type of instruction, press the Alt key and hold it until you also press the letter B key. Then release both keys. Similarly, a command such as Control C means that you depress and hold the Control key while pressing the letter C key. The function keys located along the top of your keyboard are simple to use. If you are instructed to press the F3 key, for example, simply press the key labeled F3. The cursor control keys include a set of keys labeled with arrows. Quickly press one of these keys to move the cursor up, down, left or right by one space. Hold an arrow key down and the cursor moves continuously. You may be asked to press the Enter key to indicate that you have completed entering information into a field. If you change your mind about performing an operation, pressing the Escape key usually cancels your selection and returns you to the previous condition. Again, refer to the information provided with each application for instructions on the use of the keyboard. If you are authorized to stop the system, you may do so by following these steps in order. You must first shut down the operating system. When you see the system prompt on the display, enter the shutdown command by typing it on the keyboard. The shutdown command for your system can be found in the AIX version 3 RISC System 6000 installation kit. When you see the halt completed message on your screen, set the power switches of the attached devices to the off position. Finally, stop the system unit by setting the power switch to the off position. In the next part, we'll show you how to take advantage of the Info Explorer and the Info Trainer features of your RISC System 6000 computer. Whether you are an experienced user or a newcomer, You'll appreciate Info Explorer and Info Trainer, the electronic information and education features provided with your system. In this section, we'll highlight the use of these two operating aids for both text and graphical user interfaces. Info Explorer is an electronic version of what might otherwise be known as your instruction manual. But unlike a printed manual, Info Explorer is organized to let you zero in on the information you need much faster. Here's how it works. The procedure for starting Info Explorer depends on the power station or power server model you are using. If you are using an ASCII display, type Info at the system prompt and press the Enter key. If you are using an AIX Windows desktop, Point to the Info Explorer icon and double-click the left mouse button. The first things that you see are the navigation window and a document window. The document window provides you with instructions on how to use Info Explorer and in just a moment we'll show you how to use this document window. The navigation window helps you find the information you need. When the navigation window appears, it automatically presents the task index. By selecting the appropriate button, you can also choose to see a list of system commands or a list of books stored in your system. You can also choose to view a list of notes or a list of bookmarks that you or another person may have previously placed within Info Explorer. You can choose the History option which keeps track of your Info Explorer selections so you can review them later. Finally, you can choose Education, which starts InfoTrainer, a valuable one-on-one -on -one training facility built right into your RISC System 6000 computer. Let's explore the Task Index. It contains descriptions of everyday tasks that can be performed on your system. For this example, we'll select directories with the mouse. If you're using a text display, use the Enter key, the arrow, and the Page Up and Page Down keys to move through and select items in the task index. Here are all the tasks we can do with directories. Let's see how to change from one directory to another. The information on how to do the task appears in the document window. If there is more information than can appear in the window at the same time, use the scroll bars to browse through the information. Scroll the text by clicking on the up or down buttons located at the right edge of the document window. 
or you can click on and hold the elevator box and drag it up or down until you see the information you need. Alternately, you can use the arrow or page up or page down keys to move through the information. To close a window, select the Info Pull Down menu located at the top left corner of the window. On an Ask Key type display, your instructions are executed by moving the highlight over the command and pressing the Enter key. Words or phrases that are underlined or enclosed in a box are linked to other parts of Info Explorer. Place the cursor anywhere in the box and select it. Info Explorer instantly provides you with more information on that topic. As you move through information in this manner, the history function tracks your selections and allows you to backtrack through the information you've read. If you want to make a printed copy of the information you are reviewing, select the print option. There are also features for making notes for yourself or other users. Similarly, you can leave bookmarks at any point so you can quickly retrieve commonly used information. Info Explorer has many other options, such as the ability to perform simple or complex word searches. You can learn more about those options by using Info Explorer yourself. Just remember this tip. If you create any notes or bookmarks and want to use them later on, be sure to save them before ending your session. And if you need help while using Info Explorer, select the Help option. We suggest that all new RISC System 6000 Power Station or Power Server users take advantage of the Info Trainer facility. From the Info Explorer navigation window, select Education you are presented with several helpful options to assist you in learning to use your RISC System 6000 computer. The Info Trainer program allows you to learn in a manner that is most comfortable to you. You can take a course in a structured manner, starting at A and ending at Z, or you can select entire courses, individual topics and subtopics specific to your needs. You navigate through educational articles the same way you navigate through Info Explorer. Now, let's select Info Trainer. Info Trainer provides a structured course on any available subject. After we select a course, Info Trainer gives us a course overview, advises us as to who should take this course, how much time is required to complete the course, and the topics available. While reading the text, we have an opportunity to test our understanding of the material by going through exercises and interacting directly with AIX. We suggest you take advantage of InfoTrainer as your schedule permits. You'll find InfoTrainer to be a quick and effective means of learning some of the basics and finer points of your RISC System 6000 computer. Your RISC System 6000 computer may have been ordered with the AIX version 3 base operating startup system and AIX Windows pre-installed. Licensed applications are pre-loaded and ready to install. These licensed applications will need to be installed in order to instruct your system as to which applications you wish to use. If you need to do this, you must run the system management startup tool. From the AIX Windows desktop, open the Supplies Cabinet. Double-click on the System Management Startup Tool icon to start the program. Whether you are using AIX Windows or an ASCII display, the System Management Startup Tool looks the same. The first screen you see is the System Management Startup menu. Each item on the menu allows you to change the way your system is configured. Use the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard to select your menu options. Press the Enter key to see the next menu or screen. Use the displayed information to see the changes you can make to the system. Refer to the installation kits provided with your AIX version 3 RISC System 6000 and licensed applications to complete their installation. We've covered a lot of information in this videotape. Don't expect to remember everything. 
we suggest you review portions of this videotape one section at a time. Refer to the Quick Start Kit for handy reminders regarding the basic operations of your Risk System 6000 power station or power server. And use Info Explorer and Info Trainer to increase your understanding of the system. If you should experience a problem, follow these three steps. First, check that all cables and connectors are securely attached. Second, check Info Explorer or your manuals to be certain that you are performing the correct procedure for your particular system. And third, get assistance from IBM. Most problems can be solved over the telephone in just a few minutes. Your RISC System 6000 power station or power server is a bold step in computing. We hope you'll use the tools we've talked about to tap the power of your IBM RISC System 6000 computer.